What's up, YouTube? Hi. Um, <clears throat> very quickly, um, Stuart Lee. Um, this is called Playing the Room as It's Dealt. I'm not sure what it's from, actually. It looks a bit like... Um, looks like the set from uh, Stuart Lee's Comedy Vehicle, but um, I don't think this is from that, because I've seen all of those, unless... Maybe there's a new series or something. Uh, I don't think so. Anyway, it's called Playing the Room as It's Dealt, uh, and uh, uh, but I prefer to call it A Forest of Ghosts, uh, and you'll find out why. Uh, and it, it's uh, genius, of, co of course, as ever. Uh, so uh, let's uh, literally um, just dive right in. You know, for a lot of men of his generation, I think in many ways the war never really ended. <laughs> still just you, isn't it? It's still just you. That, do you know what? I've been, I've been running this in live for about six months and there is normally applause there. And it is fucking sod's law that the night you come to record it is just one pocket of people going... That's why I always... That's why I always drink the water at this point because I, I drink the water sort of magnanimously while I await, wait for the... Don't, no, don't... No, 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 we play the hand we are dealt in this game, right? Play the room as it lays, right? What a fucking unbelievable. It's a good routine, this, you know. This is, a, this is right, there's a lot of scepticism in the room. You particularly, sir. Not, you've not... People in the front row going, oh. right, this is a good bit, right? The problem is, you're not... This plays into your, what you think of us as well, doesn't it? You think... Uh, we're mad comedians, don't you? Sort of crazy, desperate figures, sort of uh, low self-esteem, you know, wanting the approval of strangers all the time, perhaps because of some childhood trauma. <laughs> OK, this is why this is unworkable, right? Because there's people... There's a table here finding things that aren't there, right? And yet here, the beard guy, this front row, and yet I'm supposed to steer a course through this. I'm glad this has been captured because it shows what an impossible... Every now and again, this is a, it is a very difficult job, this. You know, we... Well, we lose... It's very stressful. We lose a lot of people to the... We, you know, like Hancock and uh, Lenny Bruce, all these guys, because it's... it's the, you. you have got a bit and it always goes bang 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 and then you have a night and you feel it melting under you and you I mean audiences like you you know you you as good as murdered Robin Williams <laughs> you did you 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 heard you as good as got the fucking noose and kicked the you did and this is what you think isn't it right this is what you think of going, oh, Robin Williams is mad. He must have been on drugs or drunk. That's what you think, right? You're like journalists. We don't think that, OK? We know what it is. It's 60 years of nights like this, where you've got a thing that's like that and that and that, and it's all... You know, we lose a lot, we lose a lot of people, is all I'm saying. A car, right, a car is a lethal weapon, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't get behind the wheel of a car if you couldn't drive, would you? No. And likewise, a comedy audience, right, <laughs> chipping away at people's self-esteem, that is a lethal weapon, right? And you should not be in a comedy audience if you can't follow the development of an idea through. Because there are consequences of your indifference, of your stupidity, and that is the fucking... Holocaust of dead comics that we have got. Lenny Bruce, Robin Williams, Hancock, all these guys. And the longer you do it, you lose people you know. And I mean, I... I 
was on a bill in Montreal, 98, 99. And it was me, for about a month, me, Richard Jenny, Mitch Hedberg, who's very good, and uh, Stan Hope. And, um, you know, within about f five years of that gig, half the people on that bill were dead, you know. Because of you, and well, <laughs> well, you know, why would you laugh at that and not at a, not? At a, uh, why would you laugh at someone remembering people that they've worked with who have a not a not at a joke uh, about flies? You know, I don't. I don't really. I think about then. I think about all the comics we've lost, and I, th I think about all the dead comedians dead by their own hand, and I... I think about them every night before I, before I come on stage, but I do come on stage, and I... and I, I... I walk out onto these stages every night through a forest of ghosts. <laughs> of all the dead <laughs> comics, and I look through them, and I see you. <laughs> and the worst ones are the, the people that I knew, because they're not like ghosts in a film there. They're just in the clothes they wore when I knew them, and they they stand just like they would have stood at the bar in Edinburgh or whatever. And they come up to me on this side, some of them, and they say to me, oh, don't let them get you down, you know. <laughs> on this side, they come in <laughs> close and they whisper to me, join us, join us, join us. Maltese flies. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to finish this bit because I don't want you all going on fucking social media and going, oh, then he went mad and he didn't finish the... <laughs> I'll just finish this bit. These flies weren't that bothered about all the, the stuff going on them. Uh, to them, it was just. Is that what it takes? Is that what it takes to get you and you and you? To understand that you hold in your visibly indifferent hands, in your indifferent hands, in your board, TV executive, complimentary table hands, a person's 
living, beating hearts. You should have been concentrating like that from the moment you came in. <laughs> Fucking sitting there staring at me, sitting in the front row, not doing anything, looking at me like I'm a commodity for your dying channel. <laughs> Fucking blokes creeping out in front of you. Because <laughs> there are consequences of your indifference, and that is the dead. The piling up of the dead. Now, the old music organised people you know, and their blood is on you, on your faces, pouring down your. <laughs> Maltese flies. <laughs> they weren't that bothered about all the going on them. To them, it was just. <laughs> an old man's urine off a Maltese flies. Don't clap, don't clap. Don't, why are you clap? You're clapping yourself! <laughs> You're clapping your own ability to follow the development of an idea. I take that as a given, that's what you... It's not a fucking treat for me that you've decided to... This is being filmed! <laughs> and the worst thing about that memory is my... Granddad, when he was urinating on those flies, he was in his late 70s. He'd had a heart attack, a stroke, heart valve replacement surgery. He was on warfarin and all this. And, and yet the jet of his urine then... <laughs> ..was more powerful and accurate than mine is now. At the age of 47. <laughs> <laughs> oh well um yeah uh oh don't know what to say uh um which is a shame because i've got to say something now um so what i was thinking was any actor if you had if you had a a, a a talented actor and you told them that this comedian had uh had a nervous breakdown on stage, which, you know, clearly he doesn't, but stick with me. And if you told the actor that happened, and if you gave them the transcript of that and said, right, you're going to play this this comedian who sort of has a nervous breakdown, I can't imagine any actor uh, ever doing it as well as Stuart Lee does it. And that is, for me, the main uh, achievement there. I mean brilliantly written and he just as he does a time and time again manages to do something he's written as if it's just happening uh, and half the audience will not really know if you know is he serious is he having a nervous breakdown um, is this part of his routine I mean I don't know completely. I mean, obviously, I don't think he had a nervous breakdown, but but you can't tell how much of it is improvised, how much of it is written. I mean, I sort of assume that he's very clever, and because he's very clever, he um, he he works it all out beforehand. You know, he obviously gets to that punchline, and um, he he sells it so it falls flat, and then. 
he goes off on his tangent that is is written as it's, it, that is the act and anyway oh, I could go on I could go on all night uh, so that's Stuart Lee again um, I never ever get tired of Stuart Lee uh, and um, it's a shame for him and others that Covid has come along and stopped all their live touring uh, but anyway um, hopefully I'll go and see him live again uh, some, some years ago thank you and um, don't nobody go nowhere